background is medicine and biology and I worked on also on plague but only on epidemics during the second pandemics and I've collaborated with historians and also in one case I've been archaeologists but uh, uh, as, as you will hear I've been involved in different studies in epidemics during the second pandemic and I was co-author on three of the papers we saw on the list of the historical ex exposition in the beginning. Uh, but today I'm not going to talk about the second pandemic or epidemics during that pandemic. I'm going to go far back in time and uh, present some results or hypothesis really connected to a very early phase. Maybe the plague was present and I will not go as far as Eva did in her talk, but I will go to a specific time period about 1,000 years BC, or 1,200 to 1,000 years BC. And we have, I would like to start with uh, one history which you probably all know, the description of an epidemic in the Christian Bible in the first of Samuel, uh, chapter 5 and 6, which describes some epidemic uh, among the Philistines, the uh, people who invaded the Canaan, the land of the Israelitic tribes at that time, which is the time a little before 1000 BC, before the king of Saul and David in the Christian tradition. Of course, this migration of the people to that region from north, they, they were called the Sea People, is known not only from the biblical, biblical sources, but also from other written sources, in Egypt and in uh, Syria. So we know that the history here is also from other sources. Of course, not the details about the epidemic, but in, in the migration and the fighting between the invaders, the migrants, and the people of the Israelitic tribes. That's known from other sources. And we know when it happened. So I will start with that description. You, have probably heard about it and of course people when the Bible was translated to modern European languages around the 16th century as a consequence of the Christian Reformation at that time uh, plague epidemics was common in Europe and people knew also lay people knew about plague and interpreted the description of the epidemic as plague as you can see in art from that period uh, and also later uh, biblical scholars uh, in the 19th century when plague was not known to lay people in Europe and not to the most of the medical profession they uh, tried to say that this is not an epidemic of, of plague uh, they heard about the plague from the plague in London in 16 and so on hundreds but but this is not plague what we have here here is some other serious epidemic but what I will try to show now first, in my first part, I will show that maybe it was plague. When you modern biblical scholars go back and analyze not only the surviving Hebrew text, which is rather late in fact, it was from the 10th or even the 11th century, the oldest surviving Hebrew manuscript of, of these books. So, but the Bible, the Old Testament was translated to Greek already 300 years if BC and the oldest manuscript of the Greek translation is much older than the, than the oldest Hebrew text and there are differences and biblical scholars have tried then to combine these two sources and try to reconstruct the original Hebrew text and I will show you some examples of that of course this is uh, some sentences from the new English Standard Version of the Bible. I've only picked out some sentences here. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, that was part of the fighting, they captured the Ark of God. They brought, the, brought it to Ebenezer, which is uh, where the fighting took place, and to Ashdod, which was one of the uh, towns, the Philistines' towns on the plains of, of uh, present-day Israel. 
and the hand of the Lord. The Lord, of course, in the Hebrew text was Yahweh. So this is a translation. But was heavy against the people of Ashtot and terrified and afflicted them with tumors, both <coughs> Ashtot and its territory. And then you can read down, it was brought from one town to another, and um, tumors broke out on them. I will come back to that in next or in the second slide from now. It was a deadly panic throughout the whole city. Of that, this was now Akron. There were five towns all, to, all together. The men who did not die were struck with tumors. And it continues. Um, and you can read down here. They were told that they should give offerings and they br brought back the Ark of God. But they also made uh, gold uh, copies of the tumors and of the mice. I will come back to the mice according to the number of the roast of the Philistines. And then the epidemic did not only hit the Philistines, but they also hit the Hebrew people when they brought it back, as you can see from the last quotation there. So, if we then go back to biblical scholars, difficulties with this modern translation. First of the original texts are omitted in this translation. For instance, tumors broke out on them, was on their hidden parts or on their private parts, on parts of the body which is not shown usually, which of course we can be interpreted as the inguinal region. That's at least one interpretation. One sentence is completely missing. It is in the Greek translation and it must have been lost later. That's the current interpretation. That is that uh, the Lord, or Yahweh, brought against Ashtot mice who swarmed from their boats and came up in the midst of their land. In the 19th century, this was interpreted as an agricultural test. But what was it really mice? When we go to the, the word used for timor, tumors, it was opalim which the current meaning in the Hebrew is swellings. It's not translated as tumors or buboes. But in the 19th century, it was translated as hemorrhoids because it was in the hidden parts. So that's what they thought it was something around the, uh, the anal opening. That was used as a translation as late as in the New English Bible in 1970. The Hebrew word akbar is translated by mouse. But there is a gap in the, in the oral linguistic tradition in the Hebrew language, in the Middle East. It was spoken by rabbis of, of elsewhere, but there is no... So, not only modern word is of course invented in the modern Hebrew language, like television and helicopters and so on, but also traditional words for animals and so on. Rabbis in, in Spain and other places did not really know what was referred to. And the modern interpretation is that the word akbar can mean any small rodent. Gerbiles, Nile rats, even but and also black rats. Not only mice. So this is then the modern translation then is that this is a very precise description of the epidemic of bubonic plague. And it lasted um, seven months, and it killed a lot of people and <coughs> made tumors in the hidden parts. Then I move on, where did the sea people come from? They came from <coughs> north, from the Aegean area. And what happened at that time in Miss Mycenaean Greece. It was a disruption of, uh, of, the, of the empires or the, the states there. They did not decline slowly. And now we are back to the archaeologists. It, they did not decline slowly and then disappear. They declined at the top of their prosperity. 
And the archaeologists have done a lot of work, of course, on, on the building up of, of all the palatal centers and so on. But they were destroyed suddenly, not all at the same time, but some years between and later in the, on the islands than in the middle. And then they were reoccupied, some of the centers, outside the palaces with a slow, lower population. And then a new disaster struck later. Which all of this is very similar to what happened after the Justinian plague in Italy, for instance, and in uh, Europe during the second pandemic. You have, uh, we say that the Black Death killed more than half of the population of some countries in Europe. It did not the first plague epidemic. It was not the 1348 to 50 epidemic. It was a combination of that epidemic, the next one in 1362. The third one in 1373 or so, all together they killed more than half of the population. But it took all these successive epidemics. And then the population was kept down for a long 200 years by repeated epidemics of plague. And this is very similar to what happened in this e area at that time. It was the repeated epidemics, then increasing population, then down again. And it did not happen at the same time, it spread out. So my hypothesis, and that's why I wanted to present this, of course, is that both what happened in, on the plains of uh, present-day Israel and Lebanon, and what happened in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Round Set Greece at the end, and in Hittite Empire came to an end at the same time. There were destructions in, on Cyprus, in some of the other areas in the area, and it all happened at this time, a little before 1000 BC. And what we need now, of course, and that will be my end, is of course that we need archaeologists to give us samples from bones from this area. I know archaeologists have been very active in, in uh, Bronze Age Greece, up to the breakdown. But very little has been published by archaeologists on what happened during the destruction period. That seems to not have interested archaeologists. For the last 30 years, they say we don't know. They have hypotheses about what, what happened. There have been five hypotheses, invasion, civil war, local rising, earthquakes, climatic changes. None of them can explain what happened. And they have been discussed in detail. But even I looked in the, book uh, the exposition of books downstairs to look for the new exposition of what has happened. They all conclude we don't know what happened. We don't have any explanation. None of these explanations can be explained by the, by the archaeological evidence. <coughs> That's why I wanted to present this hypothesis and say we need some biological samples, either from the plains of present-day Israel, where there is also very active archaeology, or from, from Greece or the islands. Because it seems to be a suitable hypothesis that this is a, a very first pandemic in that part of the world, where, which was known at the time. It spread all over the place at the same time, causing serious destruction. I think it could very well have been bubonic later. Thank you.